So we are continuing with this question paper. We are just doing number four of it. So now we have in the diagram below, a two kilogram block is connected to a one kilogram block. The minute you see things that are connected, you must already think tension and all that stuff to a one kilogram block by means of a light in extendable string. You see words like this, in extendable. This just means that the string cannot, it's not like a slinky, which means it can go bigger and longer and bigger and longer. It means it's in extendable, it's rigid. Think of two people who are pulling each other with a car and they're using one of those poles. The car pole doesn't go longer and shorter and so forth. It's in extendable. These are the types of words I'm talking about. The blocks are pulled over an inclined plane. The minute you see incline, you must already know that one, you're going to have an angle and you must take into consideration FG parallel, which forms an angle of 28 to the horizontal. The sides of the block which touch the inclined plane have the same area. So just looking at, uh, at my one kilogram block, I know this is gonna be my F applied. I know I'm gonna have a normal force and know I'm going to have my FG, but remember we can break up FG as FG, let me just write it properly. We can have FG or break it up the components to FG perpendicular, and I can have FG parallel working on this block. There's also tension working on this block, and I also need to take into consideration my friction and it's the same for the two kilogram block. So those are all the forces that we need to take into consideration that are working on all these blocks. Another trick is that you'll start picking up on a trend. When two things are connected, they'll always ask you, calculate the acceleration of the system and then find the tension. The nice thing is, when you already know tension, acceleration, one, both of them are unknown, which means simultaneous equations. So you'll see the common trend as you start practicing your question papers, that questions like this do not change. The nice thing about it, you always follow the same rules, the same laws, the same steps, and you get the correct answer. But the important thing is, if you do not know how to draw your free body diagram, then you will not get it correct. Because remember, we are working with vectors. Vectors need to point in that certain direction. Vectors in opposite directions means we subtract the two, and vectors in the same direction means we must add them. Do not make that mistake, so make sure you are a-OK -okay with your free body diagram, and then we can take it away. So let's see what the first question says. The first question says the kinetic friction, remember there's a difference between FK and FS. This will be FK kinetic friction, it's moving. Static friction is right before it actually moves. So the kinetic friction between the one kilogram block and the incline is 4N, while the kinetic friction frictional force between the two kilogram block and the plane is 8N. So do not get this wrong. With the one kilogram block, we have a kinetic friction, which is FK of four, but for the two kilogram block, we have 8N. So do not use the wrong one uh, wherever it's required. Then it says we must draw a label free body diagram, there's a difference between a force diagram and a free body diagram. Force diagram uses a block to show this, the, this, whatever we're talking about, the object. A free body diagram uses a dot. There's a difference between the two. Draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the one kilogram block. Remember, when you talk about free body diagrams, your mark allocation is your best friend. This means I have five forces that are actually working on this object. I can already see my normal force, my applied force, my force of gravity, I have tension, and then I've got friction. Those are then my five forces. But remember now we have to label them. Labeling them means name it F of N, F of K, F applied, and so forth. So this is 4.1.1. Let's answer it and let's see what we get. So this is 4.1.1. Remember it is on an incline. What I like doing, draw your incline, then you can take it off. So we have a circle or a little dot. It's a free body diagram. I know that there is F applied in this direction. I know that I have my normal force for my block. Remember FG goes straight down, not perpendicular to the surface. This can be FG or you can call it weight. Now I know that I've got my kinetic friction. They already told me the two blocks have different kinetic frictions. In the same direction, I've got a force of tension. Then you can take off this 
and then we sh it shows the examiner, oh my word, it is on an incline. Let me just take that off and then just draw that perfectly down. There we are, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five forces for five marks. Let's see what the next question says. The next question is asking us, we must state Newton's second law of motion in words. It's only for two marks. If you state a law, it does not change. They're not saying explain Newton's law in two words. They're saying state. So it does not change. Go anywhere across the world and it'll always be the same. And this is 4.1. So I'm going to give it to you in four different ways. So I, I, I know it in two different ways. 4.1.2. It is a bit long, so you must make sure you choose one that works for you. So the first one says when a net force is applied... When a net force is applied, already you can see with each and every question, they first ask you to define or state a law and so forth. And these are marks. And already we have been asked Newton's first and second law. So you must make sure that you do not fail because you were lazy to read. Mass. And then, so when a net force is applied to an object of mass M, it accelerates. Accelerates. Remember, I told you my story is think of me and Bali pushing a block. It'll accelerate in that direction. Accelerate, accelerate the object. Object in the direction. In the direction of the net force. The acceleration, acceleration is directly, directly proportional, directly proportional to the net force, to the net force and inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. Proportional to the mass of the object. Of the object. I just want to do this quickly. If you are getting confused, remember we have F net is equal to MA. If we make A the subject of the formula, then I've got F net is equal to M. A is directly proportional to F, but inversely proportional to M, meaning if acceleration increases, your force increases. If acceleration increases, then your mass decreases. Or another one that you can use. I hope I'm going to have enough space here. When a net force when a net force acts, acts on an object, object of mass M, of mass M, the acceleration, acceleration that results Results is directly, this is is, results is directly proportional. Proportional to the net force, the net force and has a magnitude, just gonna go down like that. That is inversely proportional. Proportional to the mass. In the direction that is the same, direction is the same, 
same as that of the net force. Okay, so you could have used any one of these. Make sure you choose one that you will remember. I like the first one because I'm able to use the formula and then elaborate on it. Let's look at another question. So we have stated Newton's law of motion. Now 4.1.3 says calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string connected to the, brick, to, the, to the blocks. Tension is unknown, but now I know that I've got F net is equal to MA. I also don't know the acceleration of the system. Two unknowns means simultaneous equations. Simultaneous equations means you must first know the free body diagrams of these blocks. So let's take it away. This is now question 4.1.3. Let's first look at the two kilogram block. It's also on an incline, just gonna double check on that, also on an incline. I'm gonna have tension moving up, I'm going to have friction moving down and FG pa uh, parallel. So I'm gonna have friction, kinetic friction, I'm gonna have FG parallel and I'm gonna have tension moving up in that direction. So I can see, aha, uh -huh, in this direction, I've got tension moving in this direction. I'm going to have Fg parallel. I'm also going to have the kinetic friction of that block. So I like saying 2 kg so that I know I'm working with the 2 kg block. I'm going to redraw my other one so that you know where I get everything from. I've got my force applied. Remember, it is at an incline. I've got my weight or my force from gravity. I'm going to have my tension. I'm going to have friction, kinetic friction in that direction. I'm going to have my normal force, which is F of N. I also need to take into consideration that I have, I'm just going to draw it in another color here. I'm going to have FG parallel because it is on the surface. And then I'm going to say my 1 kg block. So with my 2 kg block, let's first formulate a, a formula. So I can say F net is equal to MA. So what is making F net? I've got tension in that direction. I've got two forces, this one here and this one here, in the same direction, right? So therefore, it means I'm going to take tension, subtract these two, or add these two, then subtract them from tension. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to have tension minus my FG parallel minus my Fk is equal to Ma. I don't have tension, minus Fg parallel. Remember we use sine, Fg is Mg, mass and gravitational acceleration, sine of theta minus my Fk, I was given my Fk, which is given to me as eight, is equal to my mass of the block is two. I don't have my acceleration. I'm gonna plug in these ones. Got my tension, my block is two, Gravitational acceleration is 9.8, and then I've got sine, my angle is 28, minus eight is equal to 2A. Let's simplify it. I'm gonna say tension, I'm gonna work out all of this and see what we get there. So if I put this in my calculator, I'm gonna have 29.8, and then I'm gonna have sine of 28. So I get that. I get 9.9.02, and then I'm going to have to round it off. And then I'm gonna first also add my eight there. I'm gonna subtract my eight, minus eight. Let me just check if I'm doing it correctly. Uh, yes, I must then subtract my eight. Let me just calculate that again. I forgot what it is. Two, and then I've got 9.8. And then I've got my sine of 28. I get that. Then I'm gonna subtract my eight. Then I get 1.20. The one is less than five. Rounding it off means I'm going to leave it as in two decimal places. I'm gonna leave it in two decimal places. So I'm gonna get negative 17.20 17 is equal to 2a. Now let's look at my one kilogram block. I'm also gonna start with F net. I'm gonna start with F net is equal to MA. I'm gonna have F applied in the one direction. I've got 
force in terms of gravity, I've got tension, and I've got kinetic friction all working on that object. So I'm just gonna break it up. Now, one other thing to remember, can you see tension in this one is going that direction, tension is going in this direction. When you're doing simultaneous equations, for your tensions to actually cancel, one tension must be a positive and one tension must be a negative. In this case, I've chosen this tension to be a positive. If I'm gonna take this one as a positive, means I'm gonna take this tension as a negative, meaning I'm going to subtract it. Therefore, I can say F is minus my tension. Let's put it in one bracket. I'm gonna add these and then subtract them from that. I'm gonna say tension. I'm gonna say plus my FG parallel. I'm gonna add my kinetic friction which is all equal to MA. Now I'm gonna break it up. I am given my force, they've given, they've given, me, given me the force, it is 30. So the force that's pulling these two is 30. So I'm gonna have 30 there. I'm gonna say minus tension, which is unknown. I'm multiplying the negative in, multiple, negative minus. FG is MG and we use sine of theta. And remember, they've given me my kinetic friction for the one kilogram block, which is four, is all equal to my mass is one, and then I've got my acceleration. I'm then four gonna say 30 minus tension. The mass of my block is one, gravitational acceleration is 9.8, and I'm gonna have sine of 30, sine of 28 rather, minus four is equal to one A. So I know we're running out of time, so I just want to tell you, okay, they, they're telling me I can actually finish it. So let's kill it. So I've got 30 minus my tension. I'm going to minus that. So let's see what I have there. Let's put all of this in one, in one sequence. Okay, okay, let's just write it down to be good Samaritans. And then I'm going to have sine of 28 is going to give me that. I'm going to minus 4. I'm going to get 0 0.60. So therefore... I'm going to have, oh, I still have my 30. Let me see, let's do it the long way around. 30 minus 0, 0,60. Is that what I had? 0, 0,60. Yes. And you still have 1A. Now, the tricky part with this one is I'm going to name this equation 1, and then I'm going to name this equation 2. Let's already see. I can see one tension is a positive, one tension is a negative. Because when you add equation 1 to equation 2, the negative and the positive will then cancel each other out. Let's work out that 30. Let's work out that 30. So in this case, I'm gonna say 30 minus, 30 minus 0 0.60 is gonna give me 29.4. I can therefore say 29.4 minus T is equal to 1A. I'm gonna take it up here. I'm gonna add one and two. Equation one, we've got T minus 17.20 is equal to 2A. For the next one, I'm gonna have a T down here, 1A. I like putting everything underneath each other and then 29.4, we're gonna add these two. Already you can see a one, a T plus a minus T, this and this will cancel, you'll add your numbers. And one plus two, you'll get a 3A there. Taking it over, you should get for your acceleration then 1.4, acceleration is in meters per second squared. And then from that, and then you can substitute it in either equation two or equation one. Once you find your acceleration, you'll substitute the value of there, and then you are then able to find the value of T. So either one, equation one or two, it doesn't really matter.